Hi, Achim here from Inner Space Explorers. Today we want to talk about what size of wing do I need? It's a question that comes up frequently. People ask me, is it too small, is it too big, what shall I buy, etc, etc. And I thought it's about time to have a little chat about this. It's not rocket science, it's common sense uh, in a couple of numbers. And I just want to show you the concept uh, that works no matter if you dive a single aluminium cylinder in a BCD in the ocean or if you dive a double 12 steel in a dry suit in a cave in fresh water. It's all the same. It's just the general idea. Um, before I get into this topic, if you like my content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and also have a look at our Patreon site where we discuss things in detail and I answer a lot of questions. All right, let's have a look at the wings. So there's a couple of things we have to take into account when we uh, consider wing size or BCD size, let's say. So the first thing is we, the divers. So generally speaking, the diver is neutral. So as we are basically water walking around, um, we are more or less neutral. So obviously there is and you can you, you see that I mean if you're in the water in a bathroom suit and you exhale you can actually descend if you inhale you're on top of the water so that's a good proof um, so to speak that we are more or less neutral. So now obviously when we're divers and we're not diving in a bathing suit we have a couple of items on us that change that. So the first thing is obviously our protection suit can be a neoprene uh, wetsuit, can be a dry suit, no matter if it's neoprene or trilimited and trilimited with an undergarment. Whatever we use, it will lift us so it has positive buoyancy. Um, then obviously if, if we have a wing, there's always some remaining gas trapped, etc. that normally adds a little bit of lift as well. And uh, if depending on what type of undergarment we uh, use, if we dive, um, um, a trilimited dry suit, then obviously that also uh, changes our buoyancy characteristics. So on, on the other hand, we have the weights that we add, and that's normally the amount of weights or the amount of weight that we need to compensate for the lift created by um, the positive, the positive buoyant um, equipment that we use. All right. So. We have a couple of items that are always negative and they don't change. So we have our regulators, fins, the back plate, and various items like spool, reel, vet notes, or whatever you have in your pockets. So it's, it's just numbers that I know work for my equipment. Obviously, you have to look at what you use. And this is all based, what I have here, on a set of doubles. So, my regulators are about two kilos negative. The fins that I use, the heavy rubber fins, are about a kilo negative. I put another kilo for various items, and my back plate is about two kilograms negative in the water. So that sums up in six kilos of additional weight. Um, then we have a stage, just that stay on the left side. So I use, for that example, an 80 cubic feet stage. And again, this is my gear. That's, that's how I rigged it and that's how it works for me. You have to look at your gear. My concept is that the 80 cubic feet stage is about neutral at 100 bars, so half full. If it's full, it's about 1.5 kilos negative and below 50, it actually gets posit really positive about one kilo, one, 1 1.5. And um, obviously that depends on the type of rigging you use, the type of bolt snaps you use, and especially the regulator you use. There's regulators that are really heavy, especially the first stages, others are very light. So depending on what you use, these numbers can change. So, but we see um, worst case scenario positive, it's one kilo, worst case scenario negative, it's 1.5 kilos negative in our example. And now we have the doubles and um, what we have to be aware of, and we already see it here by the change of buoyancy, is the weight of the gas. So we talk air now, obviously these numbers change when you use mixed gas. Um, so one liter of dry air at around zero degrees Celsius, so freezing temperature, is 1.3 grams. 
Again, there's a lot of variables in that. If the gas is warmer, colder, whatever. If it's different gas, but it's, it's rough numbers. I want to give you an idea. So that means if we have a double 12, that at 200 bars, that gives 4,800 liters of air. And that means about 6.2 kilograms of weight from the air that we press into these tanks. So now, if you think about Archimedes, we have two 12 liter tanks, which gives a water displacement of around about 24 liters, probably a little bit more because in that case, the outer diameter is uh, relevant and not the internal uh, space. And we have two times 14 kilos. That's again a rough number. So the double 12 that I use is between 13.7 and 14.4 kilograms. Obviously you can find others. You can have like the 300 bar high pressure ones that can be up to 16 kilos. Uh, but I've also seen some that are only 12, 12.1 uh, that are almost neutral. But generally speaking, around about 14 kilos is probably a good number. And it represents the tanks that I have in my basement, so that's why I use it. So if I have the weight of 28 kilos by the two tanks plus the displacement of 24, that means that I have roughly um, four kilos of negative buoyancy from those empty tanks. So then we have the manifold and the stainless steel bands with the bolts, that's roughly another three kilos. So we can say that our double 12 empty is about seven kilograms negative. So if I fill it up, we have six to seven kilos more, depending on how much you fill. This is calculated for 200 bars. Maybe you have 230 or something like that. So let's round it up. So that means we have 14 kilos negative if it's full. So if we bring all of these things together, that means a full, full tanks, we have about um, 20 kilos from the 14 kilos here from the double 12, six kilos from our various items makes 20 and minus 1.5 from our stage, which means we are 21.5 kilos negative. So if everything's empty, worst case scenario, we have 13 kilos here um, from the double 12 and about one kilo positive from the stage, which makes us 12 kilos negative. So now let's talk about the wing. So what does the wing have to do? The wing has to allow, or <laughs> the wing has to support our gear in the worst case scenario, which means a simple test. If you take your gear off and put it in the water, is the um, wing able to float it, including the stage in that case? If not, then something's wrong. So that means that you need your um, buoyancy from your suit, for example, not inflated yet, to compensate for that. But that's not a good idea, because if one of these uh, devices fail, then obviously you have an issue. So we can say that the wing definitely has to compensate 21.5 kilograms to keep our gear floated. And here comes the concept of the balanced rig. And that also goes back to uh, the old saying, no steel in ocean diving, which means no steel with a wetsuit. Because if your wing fails, can you swim that up in a wet wetsuit at depth, which is compressed, which doesn't have any buoyancy itself? Most probably not. So if you have a dry suit, you can use the dry suit as an um, alternative buoyancy device and can compensate for that. So um, when you look at wing sizes, then the, the most common wing sizes are 45, 55 and 65 lips, which means 22, 27, 35 kilograms roughly. So what do we need? Um, we see that the 45 lips wing, the smallest one, would still make it but just. So if you have a little bit of a heavier regulator, if you have a proper k fill, I don't know, 280 bars, depending on where you are, if you take these two extra reels, etc., it could be already on the critical range or in a critical range. So what I do, I use a 55 pound wing 
um, in that configuration. So that's 27 kilos that gives me plenty of um, of safety margin, so to speak, and uh, the 65 would be way too big. So 65 I would probably use if I dive double 18 and three stages. Then that would be would make more sense. I mean, you can do the calculation by yourself. And obviously, you see that there's a lot of things where you can play around. You can change your backplate from a steel to an aluminium or to a carbon fiber. Uh, you can use lighter regulators. You can use different uh, fins. Um, you can use super light regulators on your stages. There's a thousand different points where you can play around. Again, I said it, if you use a helium-based mix, obviously the weight in your tanks becomes lighter. Um, so in that case, you just have to make sure, on the other hand, that you have enough weights that in that scenario, you're still able to maintain a proper stop. But that's a different story, so that doesn't have to do anything with the wing size. But generally, that is what you take into account when you think about is that wing sufficient for my type of diving and for the gear I want to use with it. So I hope that makes sense and answers all the questions. If you have more questions, comments, please put them in the comment section. Please hit that like button. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.